Yes. We are live. This is what you need to be joining. Good evening, everybody. My name's Div, and this is VT Talk. I am joined tonight by a lady I've got the utmost respect for. The one thing I will say is I'm pleased that she's coming in via Skype because you're full of cold, aren't you, Catherine? I am. She's poorly bed in, poorly bad in bed with a shawl on, both feet in one sock, waiting for the doctor to come <laughs> and rub her chest with Vic, and not you? We've been on the phone uh, to Vic, he can't no. make it. <laughs> Aside from the flu, how are you doing? Yeah, no bad, no bad. Just cracking on with everything as you do. Yes, there's an awful lot to do. So no. that's, that, is, that is Catherine Devlin of Esita. Not, Hello. Not Eki Tart. Somebody called it Eki Tart to me the other day. <laughs> That's better than calling it East Cider. That really annoys me. East Cider? Yeah. Okay. Everybody's getting excited about East Cider. <laughs> oh, nice. So that's Catherine Devlin from, and it's Catherine Devlin because you don't like Kath, do you? I don't care. Just call me whatever. Just not late for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Catherine Devlin from East Cider, Eki Tart, <laughs> Cider is with us tonight and... In the cat house, as ever was, the effervescent loveliness and bountiful beauty liciousness that is the one and only Sav. How are you diddling, cock? All right. Um, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And yourself? Myself? Aye. I am, I am what's known in the trade as walking about and breathing. Always good. I have been reading all kinds of stuff during the course of the day, and I'll admit, I will admit to being slightly confused by certain... I was going to call them definitions, but they're not definitions by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, they are, uh, I would go so far as to say, quite, quite the reverse, in truth. The reverse mm. of definitions. But we'll be talking about that a little bit later on. Now, that graphic that I showed everybody at the top of the show, which I will show you again, we're all going to join together, Catherine, Sav and myself, and we're going to say, join, you buggers, join. Definitely. Tell join. Them. Now, no. do it. Please. Do it now. Look at that figure. Three, four, three, five, one. That's that figure to remember. And we we'll want to see what it's going to be like by the end of the show. Indeed. Um, yes. Sav and I have been watching it over the last two days, haven't we? Yeah. And, and it's growing. It's growing at a, a, about the rate of one a minute. We need ten a minute signing up worldwide. But we'll talk a little bit more about that after the titles, because it's tittle time, isn't it, Sav? Yeah, it's definitely tittle time. Definitely tittle time. So I'm going to say hello, good evening and welcome to VT Talk. Yes, indeed, it is VT Talk with myself, Sav, and tonight, Catherine Devlin of Isita. Um And we're, we, we're going to be talking about all sorts of things. We're, we've, we've kind of touched on the European Free Vaping Initiative, E-F-V-I dot E-U. That's right, isn't it? It is. I'm just about to put that link in the chat. Thank you, Sav. Catherine. Dave. We've... We've, we've kind of trolled along side by side over the last five years, they and I. You're accusing me of trolling. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we have. You're quite right. You, 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 look, you look nothing like uh, Stan Mc... What's his name? What, Stan on Glans? No, I was thinking of... Uh, what's the... I've forgotten his name now. The, <laughs> it's an age thing, you know. No, you look now like McKay. <laughs> Not even slightly, the ac and the accent's totally wrong as well. I'm sorry about that. Oh, that's okay, don't worry. Um, no, I mean, we've, we've, we've kind of been toddling along, was the word I was looking for, <laughs> for, for the last five years with ESIGs, the pair of them, because you're five years in as well, aren't you? Very nearly, yeah. Yeah. I think we started roughly the same sort of time, same month. Near as, yeah. Yeah. And over the last two years, I'm not going to say hand in hand, 
or even hand in glove but side by side and I think we've both got the same view of EFVI.eu but I do know people listen to you and they do <laughs> you can laugh as much as you like they do oh you poor people <laughs> well you know it is what it is so are you can't tell them why EFVI is so important not just for consumers but for the trade as well because it's vital isn't it Oh, it's vital for everybody. It's, it's vital if we want vaping to survive. We've got to get those numbers up so that that initiative, that citizens initiative can go ahead and actually make a difference because, OK, we have got other irons in the fire, but this is the most significant way that everybody can get involved and do their bit. And if you haven't signed already, then get out in the streets, kidnap people, drag them around to your house, put them on your computer and say, sign. I, I, I'm, I, I'm pretty sure we're not supposed to exhort people to kidnap. Maybe we're not. No. But nevertheless, you need to get everybody you know, everybody you don't know, everybody who's ever farted in the same train carriage with you <laughs> to sign this initiative. Because whether or not you're a vapor, whether or not you're a smoker, this actually affects every single living citizen in the EU now mm -hmm. and all the future generations as well. Every single person, whether you smoke or not, whether you vape or not. So I don't want any excuses. And yes, there are two jars of gherkins behind me. <laughs> don't ask me what they're for. It's just handy that I've put this little picture in picture where I've put it, because I can see the gherkins even when I put it in. <laughs> yes, there are gherkins. I, I'm, I'm gonna, I, I have no option really, but to echo um, what Catherine's just said. The fact of the matter is, these ECIs, they're called European Citizen Initiatives, easy for me to say, I know, <laughs> are, they're a brilliant construct, but they are designed to be almost impossible to achieve, hence the million signatures. The idea, though, is that you get a million people when you start one of these ECIs you get a million people to pledge if you like their support a statement of support for the ECI which when you go to EFVI.eu you'll be asked to fill one in once you've got or once there are a million statements of support for that then you can as an ECI do what the Commission does that is to construct an initiative and they are they have to help you they've got no option they have to help you now there's been I think it's six so far isn't it Catherine I uh, I believe so I did just want to go back though to you, you're saying about this is what the people need to do now is to sign it and and we need the million signatures that's absolutely right that's where we're at now but I don't know if everybody knows quite how we got to where we are now, because actually you're saying it's that they make it difficult to be achieved. And it certainly is, because the first stages before you can even get to collecting the signatures, there are so many hoops that have to be jumped through. And let's face it, they've designed this thing to be almost impossible to do. Yes. You have to have seven, at least seven different member states involved. You have to have a, an appointed, if you like, administrator stroke coordinator in each of those member states who's got to jump through X, Y and Z hoops before they even get to the point of collecting signatures. And we are so lucky that we've got enough people across the EU who care about this issue sufficiently to have done all of that. They have done all of those steps. They've jumped through all those hoops and they've set this up so that it's ready for us to sign it. The least we can do is spend that few minutes, literally it is just a few minutes to sign it. Now I know pretty much everybody watching this probably has already signed, but please get this out to the people who don't know about it yet. You know, literally walk up stranger in, in the street, go into wherever you can and find people and get them to sign it because it affects everybody. It does, it does indeed, you saw right. The thing is, I've been, I'm a bugger for Twitter. I think everybody knows I'm a bugger for Twitter. and. Looking on Twitter today, I see one uh, bricks and mortar store has set up a spare laptop at the EFVI.eu sign up page. Mm. And every customer that comes in, hey, sign that. Go on. Brilliant. Get your fingers on it, tippity tappity tip, and you're not getting your juice or your battery or your cartomizer or whatever it is you've come in for. You're not having it until you've signed up. Absolutely brilliant. Every vendor can be doing that. Yeah, I mean, we pushed it out to all the members of the seed, obviously, but I might actually go around again and suggest that because that's a really good idea. That's a great way of doing it. Well, I mean, I, I, I'll see. I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll even go up my own camera for this, that one. Even if 
you carry your iPad around with you for playing, what's that thing? The Angry way? Birds? No, the other one. <laughs> whatever. What, whatever it is you play on your iPad and you're a vendor, or you, even if you're not a vendor, if you're sitting, as Catherine says, in a train carriage somewhere and you're sitting talking to somebody, you can just say, actually, would you mind? Pop the page up on your iPad, bingo, there you go. Sign it up. Mm -hmm. Everybody you meet. The fact of the matter is, we are getting around about one sign up per minute. That is Europe wide. If I go back to that, that there, we are, we are the ones at the bottom. The UK is the ones at the bottom at 6.4% of our target because seven states have got to hit their quota. Our quarter, as you'll be able to see there, is 54,750. We should be able to do that overnight. Sweden needs, whoops, Sweden needs 15,000. Yes, it just refreshed itself. Oh, it's gone up a bit, 3, 34,370. Sweden needs 15,000. Spain needs 40,000. Slovenia needs 6,000. Uh, Slovakia needs 318, no, needs 9,750. You know I'm colour blind, don't you? <laughs> um, Romania needs 24,750. Portugal needs 16,500. And so on, so on, so on, and so on, and so on it goes. Yeah, but look at what that represents, Dave, because at the back end of all of those initiatives that are up there on that screen is an appointed administrator in each of those member states who is coordinating the efforts yep. in that country. They've jumped through all the hoops. They've done what they needed to do to set this up and be part of it. So we really do have to do whatever we can to get our quota in and hold up our end of the deal because, you know, these are people who have put their necks on the line and gone out there and done this on behalf of everyone in the EU. Mm -hmm. And everyone in the EU needs to be aware of this and be contributing to it. I would agree absolutely 150% if that was mathematically possible. I would be, I would, if, if, I, it, it's just, it's too important not to do it. My niece is staying with me till Saturday. She's going to be signing it. Her mother, Catherine, who I think is watching the show tonight, she's going to be signing it and so is her husband. And my other sister-in-law and her husband, they don't know that yet, but we'll see to that. My wife will, Keith will, Keith's wife will, and I'm going to go, I'm actually going to take my iPad and go around the neighbours and say, sign up, will you, please? Mm. Um, even if for no other reason then I'll be around a little bit longer for you to take the piss out of <laughs> or in Steph's case bring me alcoholic beverages which she does <laughs> enormously well I, and I like that idea we, we, it's got past the stage where tweeting's good enough mm. it's got past the stage to a large degree where emailing's good enough we have now got to get out there and start actively seeking support um, I keep on about the hearts and minds, but you know what I mean about that, don't you, Catherine? Absolutely. Win, winning the hearts and minds of, of, of the general public. Definitely. And I mean, I know a lot of people have got petition fatigue. You know, we've signed so many bloody petitions and it doesn't seem to do any good at all. This is not another petition. This is a very different thing. This is a really technically demanding initiative which as you said at the beginning is you know the eu makes it so hard to do these things but we have got it up and running it is involved it is happening in each of those member states far more than just the seven by the way and you know we really do have to make this make some uh, make some impact because then we've got a chance of really being able to to take some direct action which is what i know the vaping community has been screaming to be able to do and and do you know what the upside of all of this is well aside from the fact that it'll it'll enable us, us to, to, to actually get a decent initiative in front of them. Can you imagine what it will feel like for a certain Mrs. Linda McAvan oh. when the vapors throughout Europe, by virtue of getting out and doing this, stick it to her? Too right. Everybody... What do you, what do you think these gherkins are for? <laughs> I, I'm... I'm I've, <laughs> <laughs> Catherine Devlin, you have just put a picture in my mind that I really did not want. <laughs> That's what I'm here for, Dave. That's what you know you can count on me for. It, it involves a Labour MEP and a wizard's sleeve with gherkins. You know that's right. Oh, God. <laughs> Sav, rescue me. What's Chat saying? 
chat. There's been an awful lot of talk about the Gherkins. <laughs> but we'll, we'll move on from there. That was just unfortunate timing, I think. <laughs> yes, uh, there's been people saying it's good to see that the Gherkins are on charge in the background. But anyway, <laughs> Matthew Wood has said, is it worth trying to get all the forums to close down with just the EFVI link and image on each forum and not opening up again until a certain point is being reached? Obviously, that's something that the forums would have to discuss. It's not. I mean, you, do you know what? I'm going to say this. I've heard dafter ideas because certainly when, um, when they closed the forums the last time, that created a stir. It's not a stupid idea. No, definitely not. Definitely not at all. Uh, Robert Gleaver said, isn't it time to do more than Twitter and Facebook and EFVI? Um, right. If, if, and I'll bring Catherine back in on this one as well. I'm going to try and do it this way, I think. Catherine, right. Let, let's, be, let's be right about this. Everything that we've done, I think, thus far with Twitter and Facebook and, and emails they've been with the general idea of, of changing the minds of certain people and that has been relatively successful i believe in that we've we have actually managed to change a lot of minds 130 went the right way from one in december the 19th in 2012. Mm -hmm. so that that's that's great work and that has been effective this isn't about changing minds this is about having the power to go to europe with an initiative with, if you like, the skeleton of a directive and making the buggers look at it. Yeah. This is, it's not a petition. It's not sitting, it's actually the best thing you can do in three minutes at your computer <laughs> using both hands. <laughs> yep. That I have to put it in those terms. It's not just a petition. This is giving EFVI the power to demand proper, proportionate legislation that will benefit us. That's the important part. Would you agree with that, Catherine? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, you know, the, the vapors have demonstrated just how furious they are and also though how empowered they are mm. because you know at the end of the day okay the commission and the council are not elective representatives they're just bureaucrats and they will shaft us every which way but loose but the parliamentarians there are elected representatives and they are elected by you to represent you the vaping community well us all of us mm -hmm. and you know they haven't done so and this is a way for us to say do you know what you haven't done what you were supposed to do any of you institutions and the European Citizens Initiative gives every, every citizen the opportunity to say, no, that's not good enough. We're going to hold you to account. We've got a better way of doing this. Here it is. You have to pay attention to it now. Yes, it's, it's very much a case of you didn't get it right. We're going to show you how to. Exactly. And let's face it, who knows better about e-cigs than this community? Nobody. Certainly not anybody in Brussels. They've demonstrated that very clearly. Oh, too right. Too right. And the, the, the fact of the matter is as well, we can. We can. We can show the evidence. We can insist. We can do what they did on May the seventh, but with proper scientists instead of that wank, uh, that uh, toss, that um, what do you call them, Bertolini? Um, <laughs> sorry, I ran off at the mouth a little bit. But we we can call proper scientists that do a proper job, yep. and that's what the EFVI this initiative allows us to do. I, I think it's a brilliant piece of kit. Sorry, Sav, I interrupted everything that was going on. It's all right. Um, Entropy72 has said, I suggested someone create an app for EFEI, which could be installed from the app store and carried around with you, which would give you details of the goals and an easy link to the signature form. Oh, my God. That is such, such, a, such a good idea. That is genius. And I tell you what, though, let's, for goodness sake, someone who's got the skills to do that, do it, but then share it with all the other member states that are doing this. Yes. So that we can get that out across Europe, because that would be an absolute genius. If you get that, I mean, well, if it's in the App Store, you'll get it everywhere. Um, yeah. And, and, and yeah, oh, God, yes, yes, yes. Who's, who's, who was that from, Sal? That was Entropy72. Can he do it? I'm not sure, but well, he may know somebody that can. Well, if he knows somebody that can, do it. Find out how much it's going to cost. And we'll fundraise. We'll, what do you call it? Crowdsource it. Kickstart it. Yeah. 
we'll, we'll, we'll do it. No, forget it. We'll fund that. You sure? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here first. That's why I've got Catherine here. She's one of the good ones. <laughs> one of the best ones. <laughs> Easy. I like surrounding... Don't I'll, blow too much vapour up my arse. I'm not, darling. I just, I just, <laughs> I like surrounding myself with strong women. And, and I am... What? Sorry. You're one of the strongest women I know, and you can say what you like about that. Sorry, Sav, back to you. Excuse me, caught me in the mouth of the <laughs> I know I timed it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get the name of this person, I'm awfully sorry. Um, hi, I'm from Holland and was thinking, I'm pretty sure that um, bricks and mortar shops in the UK, there are bricks and mortar shops in the UK. There are. What if they were put a flyer in each bag that holds the e cigs or purchases that the person's made that somebody's just bought and ask them to vote for it? It's just an idea. Well, again, I'm thinking, you know I, who the hell hasn't got something that they can get onto the web in their shop? Yeah. Uh, apparently, Liana Lawless's local shop, she says, my B&M can't. Phone line is used for bank cards and they don't have a Wi-Fi. They don't need Wi-Fi. You need 3G. 3G. Everybody's got a bloody iPhone or um, other... Android or something. Thank you. Yeah. And other, yeah. other daft operating systems are available that will allow you to do all of that kind of stuff. Um, seriously, you can... You can even, these days, tether. Use your iPhone for Wi-Fi and tether an iPad or a laptop to it. There is no excuse. And I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not going to be Mr. Nice Guy anymore. If any bricks and mortar store, if anybody comes up with an excuse why you can't do it, then I'm sorry, but you're planning to fail. And I've got no sympathy for you. That simple. About time I took the bloody gloves off and stopped being reasonable. Seriously, any store... Any shop that won't do this, you're asking to put yourself out of business. That's what you're doing. Just bloody do it. Tell them, Catherine. Get them tilt. Do it. Do it now. And everyone who's already signed, make it your mission tomorrow to go out and get 10 other people to sign. Every single one of you. I will do it too. We need to get 10 more people each to sign. We can do this. It affects everybody. It does. You are so right. Sav, back to you. Yep, yeah, whip it up 69 has said, is there a time limit to get all these signatures? Uh, there is. Unfortunately, there is. I'm just going to put myself in the, in the little picture with you, Catherine, because you're prettier than I am. Um, I should put Sav up. She's, she's the one people want to look at. <laughs> no, 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 they all like looking at Dave. I think I can get all three of us up. There you go. <laughs> there you are, that works. Little mini me. And two mini, mini me and two strong women. The fact of the matter, I didn't realise I could do this. This is a first. <laughs> the fact of the matter is there is a time limit. Yes, there is. And although there, I think there's 12 months from the date of incorporation, as in when the, the, the committee members got um, confirmed and everything by the EU, forget it. Let's go for six months. This needs to be done by June. I tell you something. Um, in January, Russell Brand emailed all of his followers on Twitter. He tweeted them all, and he's obviously he's got a website that he gets email addresses from. And there was a a, a petition he needed them all to sign. He needed a hundred thousand signatures for a debate in Parliament. At six o'clock, I think it was on the Monday night, he had the sum total of his signature and two or three others. The email went out at quarter past six. By midnight, he had 120,000 signatures. That's how quick it can be done. You just have to get to everybody. Email everybody on your email list, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go full screen again on this. Email, oh Lord, look what's happening now. Um, <laughs> right, two of me's just too much. That, that'll have broken. <laughs> Bloody hell, how many people have logged out now? <laughs> oh. Look, if you email everybody on your email list and say, look, I need your help, I need you to do this for me, and send them to efvi.eu and say, just sign up. I don't care whether you believe it or not, just sign up. Imagine how quick that would happen. So quick, it would be unbelievable. Oh, oh, someone's just had a good idea in chat. Yes, Get Dr. Good. Christian on it. <laughs> <laughs> Say that again, because you went. Get ooh, ooh. Dr. Christian on the case. Yes, Dr. Christian yeah, on the yeah, case. Put it out to his followers. That's a brilliant idea. It is a bit, isn't it? 
yeah, because he's got like half a million followers. That would go a long way towards it. it would. Right, right. You know, there are people that have got the ability to open multiple windows here. Somebody tweet Dr. Christian now and ask him to tweet it out and ask him if he'll put an email shot out. And then we can all follow that up and all retweet and quote and stuff like that. I've just seen the time we need to go to adverts and regroup. Have we punted at EFVI enough or shall we keep on punting it every 10 minutes as we go through the show? Need to keep punting it. Going to keep up. <laughs> yeah. Um, get used to this. You're going to be hearing EFVI in every show on vapertrails.tv. Every show. You'll be hearing it in the Dutch show. You're going to hear it in all the American shows. You'll hear it on RY4 Radio. We are going to keep on punting EFVI.eu until we get to that million. So the sharper you get people to sign up, the sharper will shut up. You've got two minutes to go and sign up. Do it now. Back in a couple of minutes. in Yorkshire for your AC games. That's iVeber.co.uk and iVeber-Alexa.co.uk iVeber and iVeber-Alexa.co.uk Proud sponsors of VeberTrails.tv And we are, picture in picture, back in the room. Let's go like that. Oh, God, I've done it again. Right, there we are, yes. We're back in the room, back here on VT Talk. And I need to go straight back to South because she tells me she has lots and lots of stuff to talk about. Yes, I've got more stuff that came in from chat. Robert Gleaver said, will one million signatures matter to the EU, though? That's only 0.79% of the population of Europe. Allow me to answer that. Aha! It does because they've got to take notice. This isn't a petition like any other petition. It's This is a statement of intent by a million people that they will support this initiative. And I believe, and, and Catherine will dive in and correct me if I'm wrong, it actually means the Commission's got to sit down and work with EFVI and we... EFVI goes to the European Parliament and makes a presentation and they enforce legislation. Am I right, Catherine? That's my understanding of it, yeah. So it's not, it, it's not by any stretch of the imagination um, what you would call um, a, a petition like any other petition. This is, if you like, if you want to call it, it it's like a little mini political party that happens to, to be completely across the EU, but with no political affiliations, a single issue party that is going to be allowed to start legislation. And it's not just being allowed, it's got to be allowed, because we've got the million people. That, that, that's why it works the way it works. There's one has was presenting yesterday, I believe, the Clean Water um, mm. ECI. And, and they've been through and they, they've begun their legislation. And watch what happens with that. It might take a year, 
But it'll work. By golly, it'll work. And of course MEPs will stand up and take notice. It's one thing to have 25 um, North Sea fishermen stood outside the Parliament building in Brussels, stinking, filthy, stinking cod, down on the floor. It's something else when there's a million people's voices being heard. It's big. It's definitely big. Back to you, Sav. Okay. <laughs> Andy Bell has said, have our MPs or MEPs been asked to sign and distribute this? Well, I think we should ask them. Mm. Certainly Martin Callanan might be uh, more than willing to get uh, involved with that. I think he'll be right up for it, frankly. Well, in mm -hmm. fact, I know he'll be right up for it. Yeah. I don't know whether they're allowed to, but we can certainly M MEPs, I'm not sure about MPs, I don't see why they shouldn't be allowed to. Mm. And we know that there's at least 130 MEPs that would uh, go our way if they're allowed to. But to start, try them. You know the ones to talk to. Why not? Give it a go. Back to you again, Saf. Right. Um, Nanny Scroggett has said, would, does anyone know if there would be a way that it can be linked to online sales? Like, for example, that page comes up the step before payment or something like that? Oh, hmm, maybe that's way idea. above my know-how. This is why I love our chat. The devious buggers, aren't they? They come up with some awesome ideas. Um, are there any vendors in chat that know whether that's possible? Because I think there's there's some furrowed brows here. If it's in software, it's got to be doable. And I think I think Tom Pruin's being asked even as we speak, as you can see. So I'll go full screen to prevent lip reading from occurring. I've done it again, haven't I? <laughs> you like that shot, don't you? I don't like that shot at all. <laughs> Keep getting right. it wrong. Well, I'll go with what I've got here. Okay. Regarding the, the talk <laughs> earlier of blackouts on forums and things like that, Slim UKV said, well, start here then. No VTTV for one evening with only a banner for the EFVI page or something along those lines. And Vape Trek also suggested put a little ditty in with the adverts on the show about the EFVI. I shall do an EFVI advert, but on one night that you will not know about, that's all you'll see. And you'll hear a voiceover going, please support the European Free Vaping Initiative on www.efvi.eu. Do it now. Support the European Free Vaping Initiative on www.efvi.eu. Do it now. Support the European Free Vaping Initiative on www.efvi.eu. Do it now. That's what's going to happen. Exactly what's going to happen. Catherine, have you got some information? Well, theoretically it's possible, but it would depend on the platform, as people have said in chat, so I'm not sure, but it's something that we can be discussing certainly with our members and see what's possible on that. Oh, wouldn't that be marvellous? We'll try. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, do you know, I'm... Oh! I was a bit... <laughs> I was a bit... I'm sorry, I'm nursing a semi now. I was a bit deflated this morning. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's only a small battery in here. It's a semi-battery, and I was nursing that. You've got a filthy oh. mind. Um, I thought you'd been taking your blue pills before the show. <laughs> I used the brown ones. The blue ones give us a headache. Ah, Did yeah. I say that out loud? Oh, oh dear. Know. Oops. <laughs> um, no, I, I was I was a little bit deflated last night, but I'm bouncing now. This is brilliant stuff. This is action. This is stuff happening. I'm, I'm dead chuffed. Sav? Right. Um, Robert Gleave has said, we've had evidence for ages, but they refuse to look at it. I'm sorry I'm not having a go, but they've all been so pig-headed over this. We've had um, who? We've had what? Evidence. Evidence for a long time to the EU is regarding whether they're going to pay any attention to this. Well, yes, but this is this is this is not the same thing. This is far from the same thing. This is it's not just presenting evidence. This is presenting the EU with, if you like, a new directive. It, it's not like anything that, we've, that, that anybody's ever seen done. If you like, it gives you a seat, not just in Parliament, but in the Commission as well. And they can't, if, as long as we get the numbers and hit the quarters in the seven states, as long as we get that, they can't stop you from doing it. This is something we need to claim onto, and it will work. It does work. 
and the reason it works is because they set it up to make it almost impossible to do and then they've put promises on the back of it that if you can do it they have to take notice they can't say no that's the important part back to you self right um our very own tim has said the vapor trail in hailstrom will have a sign up laptop in store from tomorrow morning for as long as it takes Excellent. Uh, Paul Bowers has said, as a vendor, I'm going to edit into every email I send. I'm going to edit this link into every email I send for after sales. Mm -hmm. And Dream Vapor has said, could we get Andy Sutton to edit together a quick five minute video explaining what the VFI is so we can spam it on Facebook and YouTube? That all sounds like a damned good idea to me. Um, and we'll move on all of those. Why have you got a smile on your face, Catherine? Tell me. Just reading chat. <laughs> Oh, you know, all oh, right. Sorry. That's all. <laughs> so I'll get to it. I'm, I'm sure know, it's, it, not my job. it's good stuff. I, hey, I don't even try. <laughs> I, I don't even come close. Oh, God, not again. I don't even come close to, to, to trying to do Sav's job or I'll get a good kick. Anyway, let's, uh, let's move on and, and, and move on to our next topic of discussion because the timing of this could not be better. The that was ad beautiful, wasn't it? Advertising. Beautiful. Go on, tell everybody about it. Tell no, no, everybody. Go, on, go ahead, but I was just, the timing was absolutely perfect. I couldn't have asked for better timing on it. Well, tell everybody what it's about. You're full screen, you might as well. Go on. Oh, go on then. Advertising Standards Agency yes. today finally published their consultation, public consultation on the specific guidelines for e cigs as a sector, separate, notably, from medicines and tobacco and everything else. Mm hmm. So we're chuffed to bits about this and uh, we sent it out today to as many um, vendors as we are able to reach. And if you're a vendor out there that we didn't send it to and you want to be on our database, for goodness sake, get in touch. Our website address is on our, our website, our email address rather. So, you know, do talk to us. You know, if, if we're not just here for our members. So if you want to be on our database and get information like this sent through to you, then for goodness sake, please get on our list. Email us. Let us know you're there, who you are and, and that you want to be added on. Um, but yeah, we sent it out to, I guess, around, I don't know, quite a lot of companies. Um, but having read through the, the drafts that they've got as, as the public consultation that they want comments on, it looks pretty damn good from the outset, to be fair. Mm. Um, there's not an awful lot that, I mean, you know, obviously we're going to pick through it and, and make suggestions and, and submit comments and so on. But it looks very sensible. And the beauty of it is, of course, it is sector specific. Um, so all in all, I'm really, really pleased about that. And the timing couldn't be better yes. because they have made the point very clearly that they're not trying to supersede the EU law, but they're trying to do something for the interim period until implementation comes through. But the beauty of it is this consultation will be closing by the 28th of April at 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. And then they will be effectively bringing in their guidelines thereafter at some point. I imagine I think they're probably looking at trying to bring them in by about June hopefully this year, which means that there is going to be a good year plus of time where those sector specific guidelines are in place and being enforced, at least in the UK, which will provide a template of how this could work in practice. Now, my plea that I want to send out right now to all the vendors, including my own members, um, is just please be sensible, take these guidelines on board, take them to heart when they come out work with them don't try and be clever don't try and work worm your way around it do what you should do advertise responsibly uh, responsibly and and follow those rules because then hopefully we can demonstrate to all the member states national governments who are trying to implement this nonsense from the eu that they don't need to go that far and that these these sector specific guidelines could work across not just europe actually but the whole world because they make an awful lot of sense they do. And, and Sav, you were looking at them as well, weren't you? Yes, and I thought they were very, very well written and they did make an awful lot of sense. Um, this, the only concern that's been brought up in chat from people that have read it is the 25% um, of audience can't be under the age of 18 thing. But that that's just... Um, that's uh, 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 They're asking for, for comments on that. To yeah, see they are, but can I just jump in on that? Yeah. Because actually this, this is one of the things where, this is one of the main reasons actually why I am so pleased that we have an agency as competent as the ASA looking at this for us. Because they have a specific methodology that they use um, for, because television programs are now watched on iPads, on the internet, 
out of the normal scheduling time. So rather than doing restrictions based on post watershed, they now do it based on really clever kind of assessments of the audience that's watching the programs so that it doesn't matter at what time of day it's being watched they know who the target audience is so when they say that if the target audience is 25 percent over um under 18s they actually do have good monitoring and data systems in place to be able to establish that and if it's a program that is going to be watched with a quarter of the audience being under 18s then i'm inclined to agree with them that we shouldn't actually be advertising e cigs on those programs. Yes, yeah, I, I would, uh, I would go along with that. I think. Um, I mean, the bottom line on it is, it, it's not that difficult to work out, is it? Really, you know, when you when you sit and look at it, you're talking in terms of um, Hollyoaks is yeah. is for kids, um, Crownation Street and, and Desperation Terrace in London. What's that called? Yeast Blenders or something? They're obviously not for under eighteen year olds. Um, I no, think but a lot of dead enders is watched by, by under 18 year olds. And if 25% of the audience from the data that they gather is under 18, then fair enough. No, it shouldn't be advertised during those programs. Yeah, I, w I would agree. I would agree. And, and, it, and it makes sense. And it makes sense. And I mean, I'm, I'm from a, a personal standpoint, I'm really looking forward to seeing how the text actually comes out. And obviously, we're going to have some input onto it because it directly affects vapor12s.tv. Absolutely. Of course it, it does. Um, and And... I want the guidelines to be very, very straightforward and easy to understand because we can't, as, a, as a, an organisation, we can't get involved in advising the advertisers because if we do and we make an arse of it, then we're as much liable as they are for anything that the ASA does. So I'm looking, looking for these guidelines to be straightforward, simple, black and white, and nobody pushing the envelope. Exactly. The mere fact, I think, that they're going to they're gonna make these guidelines very, very favourable because they want, um, from what I can gather, what they've got in there, they're already saying, well, it should be allowable, I think, for over 25s to be seen using the things. Yes. I mean, yes. that's, Christ, that's amazing. That is astounding because that actually directly contravenes the existing regulations, which... Um, apply to tobacco products and the act of smoking and anything which looks like smoking and of course you know we have to admit that the act of vaping does look like smoking so they do seem to have really understood the public health arguments that we've put forward to them we collectively <laughs> rather um, more, rather more so than some people in public health <laughs> well exactly which is quite ironic when you think about Just it but touch. you know thank god we have agency doing the work it's doing we're very lucky which is why you know i really would beg any of the the bigger companies who've got the kind of budgets to do tv advertising to please please think about how you apply these um guidelines and and be obviously responsible because the beauty of this is that this is going to give us a good year year and a half during which time we as an industry can demonstrate that we can behave socially socially responsibly Mm -hmm. when it comes to the advertising of these products. This may be the only opportunity we get to demonstrate that. So if we waste that opportunity, we may never get it again. You, you, are, you are so right in what you say, Catherine. I, I'm, I'm excited as hell. That semi's grown. Look at the size of it now. It's huge. <laughs> it's amazing. I'm so excited. Sav? The one thing that's coming up in chat, and um, I think you've pretty much covered it, but we'll go over it again. Slim UKV said, I'm confused. Doesn't the TPD ban e-cig advertising when it's implemented? So what is the point in this? Catherine? Yeah, well, the, the, this, is where I get, this is where I get really excited about it. Because, yes, the TPD, as currently going through, would ban pretty much all advertising along with most of the products that we all use, if not all of them. Um, so it's horrendous and clearly we're going to be challenging it and it's the amount of numptiness that needs dealing with. But the point about the ASA movement and the timing of it and why it's so crucial that they've timed it now is because it falls in the neat little gap that we get between them agreeing to the numptiness in Brussels and it actually being implemented into a member state. I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> Go on then. Sorry. No, it's all right. Uh, yeah, that'll be the one. So um, it falls in the gap, which means that there is this year, year and a half where we will have time 
before it's implemented to be able to demonstrate the social responsibility, demonstrate that these um, guidelines can work effectively to um, promote the products while also protecting children and young people. Because let's face it, we must think about the children always. Um, so, you know, but there is that little bit of time in between <coughs> where we can do that. Yes. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry. Right. While, while Catherine coughs up a gold watch. It's, that's proper man flu you've got there. It's not. I'm still upright. For God's sake. <laughs> if it was man flu, I'd be in bed asleep. <laughs> well, I would be, yes. No, the, the, the fact of the matter is, if you, if, you, if you take this consultation alongside the EFVI initiative, put the two together, and you can start to see um, not just the kernel, but also the chocolate covering on a really large demonstration of how the industry and the community can work and we can demonstrate in that period that look what you've been proposing is a pile of pants in fact it's a heap of festering fetid dingo kidneys we've put this into place the uh, uh, an official government body has come up with a set of guidelines that everybody's happy with it's working very well look at the way the numbers have grown and at the same time the AFVI can be using that and pulling that information together so that when that goes to the European Parliament and the Commission it's a fait accompli this is what we've done this is how it's working get shot of the TPD as it stood in February 2014 well, and the, do no, this actually, instead. Dave, Dave, the beauty of it is we don't have to challenge the whole TPD. No. The only bit we care about is Article 18. Yes. The legal, the legal case that, that we will be taking up will not be questioning the validity of the TPD. We will just be questioning the validity of Article 18 in the TPD and looking to overturn that. Yes, and that because, is, that's the but, last... But that in its entirety, the whole of Article 18, I'm not picking bits out of it. No. I'm challenging the whole of Article 18 on the basis that it contravenes the principle of proportionality, the whole article. Indeed. And that's something I want to talk about after the adverts, because I've just looked at the clock. So we'll okay. take the adverts, and when we come back, we're going to talk about the legal challenge. And there's nobody better to talk about it in the country at the minute than Catherine Devlin. We'll be back in a couple of ticks. <laughs> Go and sign up to efvi.eu. It's up there, there. There you are. There's, there's the web address. Go on. Support the European Free Vaping Initiative on www.efvi.eu and get all your friends to do it. Back in a couple of ticks. And we are back in the room. Now, support the European Free Vaping Initiative on www.efvi.eu. Because that's what we want you to do, isn't it, Catherine? Yep, do it now. Get everybody you know to do it. Yep. Email everybody you've ever met, everybody you haven't yet met. 
Are you fed? in random email addresses and send them an email about it yeah. with a link. Are you fed up with seeing it yet? No. Sign up. Do it now. Yes. Get used to it. It's going to keep on happening. <laughs> um, before we hit, well, actually, there's a couple of questions to come in from chat, isn't there, Sam? And I think they, they probably feed into what we're going to talk about. Yeah, we've got a couple of questions. Uh, Fusebox has said, I have a question which was also discussed on the Dutch vaping show tonight. Will the six-month term for new devices severely slow down innovation and or shut down all EU mod makers, etc.? There's a question and a half. Mm. Nope. 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 Um, I should say that, that <laughs> Catherine, Catherine's, Catherine's other half, her beloved, Tom Prune and I chat on Twitter and all over the place and we've been picking the snots out of the uh, dog's breakfast that is Article 18 in the TPD and we have the feeling that when somebody said it was scrawled on the back of a fag packet in a smoke filled room in three hours one Saturday night while everybody was pissed, they weren't far wrong because <laughs> It's it's just unworkable. For instance, the FAQs on the EU site, Parley site, says that non-nicotine e-cigs aren't e-cigs as far as the TPD is concerned. Mm. And it just occurred to me, when I bought that, which is a, a KFUN 3.1, that was a non-nicotine atomizer. The reason being, it had nout in it. They don't understand the market, so there's going to be all kinds of snots that can get picked out of all of this. So, at the moment, I would not worry. Would you worry? Catherine? I'm not worried at all. No. I'm not worried at all. No. Because the, it's such a nonsense. I mean, obviously, the, the difficulty we've got is having to wait yet again. Oh, sorry, I'm being attacked here by puppy. Hold on. <laughs> I'm pleased you said um, puppy. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, with the... The dog's breakfast that is, we don't even know yet what the dog's breakfast will look like once it gets through implementation. Mm. Obviously, we've got various teams who are working on that, on two sides of that. One is looking at how we can influence implementation specifically for the UK, but also for other member states to make sure it's not as bad as it should be based on the text we've got. Um, but also looking at being able to advise our members so that they understand what's actually required of them under these new rules. Um, but then uh, the other part of it is to look at challenging it generally because it's <laughs> such numptiness sorry <laughs> Maybe. Uh, listen i'm just going to say this you're popular enough already without bringing cuddly animals on <laughs> that's I, either that or she's just gonna eat my hand <laughs> oh, oh. Anyway. but anyway um so that's one part of it but then during the challenge stage assuming we have to go to to law there's two things that will be done at that stage one will be injunctive relief so that we can definitely, you know, um, continue trading as we have been up to now while the case goes through. And I think it's going to be very difficult for them to argue against that purely because there's still no um, evidence of harm. You know, there's, there's still no justification for this kind of dramatically overburdensome intervention. So getting injunctive relief on it should be relatively straightforward. Um, in other words, what that means is that we have an injunction that says they can't take any action against us until the case is heard. Mm. So basically, we carry on as normal until the case is heard. And if we then lose, then fair enough. But if we don't then lose, then we won't have lost anything because we will still have a business. Um, the challenge to Article 18 um, will have to wait until a member state tries to implement the directive into their national law. It doesn't have to be the UK, could be anywhere but we'll jump all over it as soon as they do try and do it in a member state. And then at that point, we go to the national courts in that country and say, we don't believe that you should be bringing in this law because we question the validity of the directive that's being brought in here, um, specifically, obviously, Article 18. <coughs> and the moment we question the validity of an EU directive in the national court, they are obliged to pass that straight up to the European Court of Justice because it's only the European Court of Justice that is able to decide questions of EU directive validity. So that's the methodology. But it does involve waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. OK, she's got the hair. That's not good. Get off. Yeah. <laughs> but but I, I will say, while you're waiting, 
You could go and support the European Free Vaping Initiative on www.efvi.eu. You could, you could get all your friends and all your family and everybody on your street to go and support and the, the dog. Yes, the dog. Well, <laughs> if they'll take dogs. It's so over 18. <laughs> Sorry, Sav? If they're over 18, yeah. <laughs> Are there many dogs over the age of 18? Oh. Depends if you count in human years or dog years. Oh, well, in dog years, I'm uh, 12. <laughs> Something like that, I don't know. Yeah. It doesn't go around twice, you know. Does it not? No. It's not like a mileage counter. Oh, well, no. It's a bit of a shame. The thing is, well, you know, with all of this, not only is there no evidence of harm, and, and here I need to go somewhere else. Um, where is it? I, I've scrolled off the bit I was looking for. I'm just going to uh, go to camera six for the time being. People might not recognise this. I have tweeted it, um, but this is from Boots, the chemist, don't you know? Mm. And it's their, um, their rebuttal to the Royal Pharmacists Society. Is that the right term for them, the RPS? Excellent, yeah. I, I usually miss the P out and just call them R's. Mm. Um, where is the bit I'm looking for? It's very short, but it's to the point. There we go. The, the R, RS, RPS says, as the evidence, as the experts in medicines, that, do you know something? You're never supposed to call yourself an expert. Other, other people are supposed to do that for you. <laughs> but it says, as the experts in medicines, we cannot support the sale of products with limited scientific evidence on safety. That's the RPS. And then Boots says... Through the Boots approval process, we have evidence of the safety of Puritan. It has been reviewed by an external toxicologist and Boots internal experts. So not only is there no evidence of harm, there's evidence of harmlessness. Snessness. For a good. tobacco product, no less. That's astounding, isn't it? Well, for a product that comes <laughs> from uh, a company that has a bit of a background. Yes, they are linked to a company that has a bit of a background in, uh, in tobacco products and stuff like that. So, one of the questions I wanted to ask you, Catherine, when it comes to the time, the fateful day when they, they say, right, it's law now, and everybody's geared up for all this legal stuff, do you think it's a good idea to have somebody, let's say in the UK, with 100 ml bottles of 36 milligram juice up for sale to see whether the MHRA might decide to take them to court so that it, it prompts it quicker and gives us a chance to get to court quicker? We won't need to because the moment they announce that it's been brought into the legislation on the statute books in, in the UK or in any other member state, that's the point at which we can challenge it. All right. So Although we, quite pos it's quite possible that on that day, um, once I've done all that, I might even do that remotely from Westminster Police Station where I'll be in their faces vaping right at them and saying, go on, arrest me. <laughs> I'll be there beside you, pal. Well, I can imagine there'll be quite a few of us actually converging on Westminster Police Station on that day. I'm thinking we'll probably be able to get six or 7,000 people down. Well, I think we should because there's a little bit of civil unrest goes a long way, you know. Oh, I'm, I'm all for a bit of civil disobedience. Well, as far as I'm concerned, they will have broken their contract with us as citizens then. Yes. And the government will cease to have any rights over us whatsoever because they want to kill us all, and that's not good enough. See, look at that. There's, there's the calm face of somebody that's plotting and planning the downfall of the British government. I think it's great. <laughs> do you know what? Genuinely, though, I actually don't think the, the UK government is going to do anything that stupid. Honestly, I think they, they've realised that they, they were completely barking up the wrong tree with meds regs. I don't yes. think they're going to do that. And I think they've actually, they have begun to realise, probably largely thanks to the efforts of people like Martin Kalanen, but also all the efforts of the vaping community, you know, we are getting through to them. Yes. We are getting through to them. And I think we are hearing rumblings from within DOH and uh, other areas of government that they have actually understood this far more than we had thought they had. Mm. And uh, by the time this comes to the other end of it, I'd be quite surprised if they will actually gold plate. But we're ready for them if they are going to do anything that stupid. I will, I will say on the back of that um, that Sweden has already announced their version of the MHRA has already said they're going med regs. And I think a few thousand people have already tweeted Chris Davis to say, yeah, and you thought they wouldn't. Mm. Um, we know Holland has announced its intention. It did that in December. 
Um, mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see how many others go down that route. And I can see that there's going to be a pan-European uprising of the uh, nth water. Um, and, and I can see EFVI being right at the centre of that. Have I mentioned EFVI yet? Have we mentioned EFVI yet? I don't, I don't think, think so. we've really got the point across, Dave, no. Right, it, this, is, this is something called the European Free Vaping Initiative. It's at www.efvi.eu. Sign it if you haven't already. And if you have, get everybody you know to sign it. I just thought I'd throw that in. It's all right, isn't it? Sav, have we got anything else? Uh, we've got a couple of comments about boots. Um... Slim UKV said, yeah, you go Boots. Uh, Lauren has said, that's very interesting and would like them to go public with that document. Oh, we just Whip did. Up, <laughs> <laughs> Whip it up 16 says, yep, Boots, come out and say, go fluck yourselves. I, I, did, I did read it as being two very large extended digits in the direction of the RPS. Yeah, and Vaping Bad says, well, that's a boot up the bottom. It's definitely that. I'm, uh, I'm well chuffed that Boots has decided to do that. that whoops, mm. wrong buttons, I've got too many buttons to press. And I note that the big hand is uh, past 12 and the little hand is on 10. It is, it is, it is, it is. Um, it only, uh, uh, we could probably talk all night. In fact, Catherine and I usually do. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, no, I get you've, uh, you're, not, you're not feeling 100%, I do. I bet you've got really strong menthol in that tonight, haven't you? Same as always. That's what I said. You've got really strong menthol in that. I can't even stand beside you when you vape and that. It's horrible. <laughs> Terrible stuff. Sav, um, no, I, I want to say a big thank you, Catherine, uh, to you for coming along tonight um, and sharing your ineffable wisdom with us all. Um, I don't know about ineffable. Or wisdom, for that matter. <laughs> no, it's always a pleasure. Always it's, a pleasure. It's definitely ineffable wisdom, and I, and I do like the idea that going forward the community and the industry will be working together as one under the aegis of the EFVI and the, uh, the ASA consultation to actually make some sense out of the crap that's been going on uh, and has just occurred this week. It's amazing. I also need to say a big, big thank you to my Oppo Sav who has been Together with Kat, I've got to tell you this, they've been me crutch today. Not that crutch. No. Nope. Um, we've had long conversations. We've been talking about all kinds of stuff, trying to get our heads together and, and, and you know, come up with sensible stuff to be looking at. I'm, I have to say I'm greatly encouraged by the conversation that we've had tonight and the conversation that you and Kat and I have been having during the course of the day. You've, you've got my undying gratitude for that, the pair of you have. Um, Pleasure. And have you got some sage last words from chat? I have. I've been saving this one. I've loved this comment. And it comes from Slim UKV, who's been well on form today. And he says, ah, that's why the EU wanted plain fag packets. More space to write directives on them. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's amazing. That's brilliant. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> Do you know I've said it before, but that just proves why we have the best chat on the planet. You are stonking you lot. You are absolutely brilliant. And with that, we are going to have to go. Um, I don't really want to, but we are going to have to go. And I'm going to end it as I always do and exhort you all to go and support the European Free Vaping Initiative on <laughs> www.efvi.eu. Vape on, vape hard, and don't let the bastards grind you down. Till next time we see you, take care of one another and support the European Free Vaping Initiative on www.efvi.eu. <laughs> Say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. <laughs>
Where's the daft bugger that said we should have mentioned the EFVI.eu? Did we not? Nah. Ah, oh, why? Never mind. <laughs> Next time. Next time. Why, I.